This is the first talk I've ever given at Elnug, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm mostly excited. Because uh, this is also an idea I've had for many years that I'm at last going to get the chance, with your help, to try and get working. So this all started, okay, first of all, I'm Adam, Admata known as Admataz. Um, you can uh, find me anywhere on the web as Admataz. I work at a company called Nearform. Nearform bought the pizza, and Nearform <laughs> bought the beer, so big round of applause for Nearform, yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this, this idea came, came around many years ago when uh, I was working uh, on a museum exhibition and I was reading up a lot about uh, play and the emergence of play and the experience of it and the togetherness of uh, people in the same room connecting. And I always thought it would be a really good idea to try and uh, bring this together in a web environment or uh, using the technologies that I use every day instead of you know, developing interfaces for corporate uh, clients. Um, and we, what really triggered this was, uh, I was I was saying thanks to all our sponsors um, a couple of months ago to Neoform and to Condé Nast for the hosting, and that's all very easy, you know, beer and pizza and venue, but Pusher, who provide us with video every month, uh, but Pusher are not a video production company, Pusher are a platform, and uh, the, the conversation sort of rolled from there because I said something like, oh yeah, you should all try Pusher, like, a bit like you did earlier. It's great for developers, wonderful, wonderful, kind of uh, Trumpian sort of thing. Um, and so the conversation progressed from there with uh, the, the video guy who was on that night, which is Alex, and we decided we need to actually show what Pusher can do, and I need to actually read some of the documentation. So that's, what, that's the origin story of this little lightning talk. Um, why is that slide there? All right. This is talking about playing together and being part, but not just being spectators, all right? And uh, of course, we've got to start somewhere. And uh, this game was invented or released slightly before I was born, which was a long time ago. And what I'm going to try and do tonight is show you how we can take something like a concept of Pong and take it one step further or maybe 100 steps further. And my initial idea for, the, for this was I read an article where someone had done this in an auditorium level and created a multiplayer Pong and the excitement that was tangible within the audience. And I'm hoping that to reignite some of that excitement here tonight. Um, to the point which you, maybe we can be like Skunk and Nancy and do some really exciting things, right? It all starts with powering real-time experiences and your in your, all your apps. I mean, I like Pusher, and I, I've got to know the technology, but really, it's difficult to get excited about language like this, right? So you actually got to build it. Hosted APIs are flexible, scalable, and easy to integrate, right? We're going to do something about that. So I've chosen a few technologies to support this. I'm using um, a framework called Fastify, um, which is a Node.js framework, uh, which helps uh, which was help with the web side of things. And I'm using Svelte. Has anyone else here used Svelte? All right, Svelte is like sort of a reactive programming for the, uh, for, the, for, for the UI, what React would be doing, but with a slightly different, uh, different approach. And um, I'll go into some of what I've done with Svelte, but mostly I want to concentrate on the, on the, on the stuff that, uh, we've, that Push is offering us as a platform. Uh, to do, let's see, did I get a slide for that? Oh, this is where we mix Pong and Skunk and Nancy. All right. Okay, um, so just, just, just want to, oh man, I'm not used to keynotes, you've got to forgive me, escape. So I just had uh, the Pusher website up here quickly, just to have a quick look at what they actually offer. Uh, clicking on products, they've got something called chat kit, they've got something called channels, they've got something called beans, and if you don't d dive much further into it, it's not really very meaningful, as I was saying. I think I find the language a little bit um, buzzwordy, I suppose. So... Uh, but there is a good section in the Pusher website around tutorials. Uh, document, the documentation is pretty good. The tutorials um, are a good place to start because they give you some really easy ways into using Node.js with a particular product that they have, for instance. And then you can uh, follow, follow the tutorial. I, I looked at these and I thought, well, maybe I'll replay one of these tutorials. Um, but I've decided to actually make something myself. Um, so what are channels? Channels are really a way for us to manage um, web sockets easily, or it, it's a, it, it takes a bit of, a lot of the pain out of uh, having web socket connections 
uh, with your app. And uh, it, it provides this uh, PubSub messaging service. It provides us a way to track uh, users in, the, in, in, in that you can have, um, you can have the, what they call presence channels, so you know which users have, have logged into a channel. Um, and there's a privacy and security layer, which I've disabled because it slows things down for what, what I'm trying to do. But all of this would be quite painful to do yourself, where Pusher help us out by providing this as a platform. Um, what are those sort of interesting? Okay, we're going to come back. They've also provide a lot of statistics and help us to help us understand how our app's working, and we're going to try and get this going in real time. Uh, Fastify, I would recommend if you're looking for a web framework, Fastify is really, really good. It takes all the good parts and uh, from ha things like Happy and Express and makes them better and faster. It's a great API. Um, Svelte, I've mentioned. Now, the game that, we're, that, I've, that I've created uh, was created mostly in Svelte because it's mostly client side. And we'll, I'll step you through how that uh, has, feeds into the Pusher API as well. Um, and all of this is available, which I'll share with you later. Uh, on my GitHub. So back to our, okay, yeah, the, the, the screen that says let's play. Um, I have it hidden over here. So for starters, if you have a device and you can see that QR code, um, please try and log into it. I'm going to log into it in the meantime here. This is, uh, this is what you should see. Um, if you don't have a, a device that can read a QR code, there is an IP address, 178 How many people, just like show of hands, are managing to log in? Okay, so we've got, we've got, we've got a few players. All right, uh, I'm behind. So uh, you need to put in your initials uh, to start off with, and then let's go and play. All right, I think the, the point of the game is pretty obvious. Uh, you've got to get the little yellow ball into one of the goals. The blue's on the right. This is great. I've got the ball. I've got the ball. Oh, no, no. Take it down. Stop it. Ah. Ow. Okay. <laughs> There's no referee. It's free for all. How many players have we got? Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to the stats and see what it's, what it's telling us. Oh. Ah, do you know your Konami codes? Yes. All right, try your Konami and see what happens. Nothing. Uh, it should happen. Up, up, down, down. Left, right, left, right. B, A. Oh, and everything stopped. Oh, my God. All right, so we had a peak of stats there going. We've had, oh, you know what? We've, we've, we might have hit our limit. <laughs> All right, so, we, so, so we've, hit, we've hit Push's free limit, um, which was 200,000. So, woo! Um, so uh, we, we uh, basically, <laughs> you get 200,000 uh, messages a day. And you, as you can see, playing a game where each move takes a message, uh, uses that up pretty quickly. Uh, I, didn't, I, I had no idea. I tested it with about five, uh, five devices at home. Um, so uh, this is the pusher interface. Uh, you can, um, there's a debug console. You can start sending messages. Oh, I can't show you one of the coolest features that I had as well. Um, also, this little black bar along the top here. Um, I'll just give a quick explanation of what's happening. So when you, when you log in, uh, you created a session uh, subscribing to a channel with, 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 uh, with Pusher. And each time you're moving, you're sending a message to Pusher, and that's getting broadcast out to the rest of the players to move you around as well. All right, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of network activity going on. Um, and Pusher has something they call presence channels. This is why I had to get you to log in, and this is why I needed to have Fastify, and I couldn't just do it as a client-side application because we needed to identify you. And so I've got an uh, uh, well, uh, authentication process going on in Fastify, uh, which is an endpoint to make sure you're a real user. That means you can log into, fast, log into Pusher and, start jo and join that channel. Um, there's another kind of channel which I was hoping to get to demo before we actually ran out of uh, quota, which, was, um, which I'll just demo in the sort of, uh, in the, 
command line here. I'm hoping it. Okay, so it was. It, the idea was that it would pick up any tweets that came in mentioning Elnug org and scan them. They would they scan across the top in that black bar in a sort of advertising style. Um, so if you're not a player, you can be a spectator or you can be an advertiser. That's kind of the, the idea behind it. Um, are people interested in seeing code, see what it looks like? I can give you a quick overview. Uh, yeah, there's thumbs up coming up at the top of there. So I'll quickly switch to my uh, non-Vim code editor. Um, sorry, Lucas. I, have to, I did try. I already tried. Um, so just to give you a quick, a quick overview, um, I've, got a, I've got a server here, uh, which is uh, my... Fastify service, um, and everything in Fastify is in here. So the, the main thing we're worried about doing here is registering and connecting. So this is where we do the connection and the authentication. I'll make that bigger if you like. Um, with uh, with uh, Pusher, this is all fairly well documented, fairly standard. I'm just uh, creating a JWT and getting the user's name that way. Um, then the bulk of the complexity really lies in the client, right? So I've, Svelte, if you're familiar with any sort of, of this sort of component-driven architecture on the front end, uh, Svelte uh, follows m mainly the same rules, but also slightly differently. So we've got a main app, and this is where most of the logic is happening. Um, and you can see my pusher uh, key there. That's great. Uh, it's not the private one, though. And this is where I'm setting up the channels and the events around binding to those channels and, and, and the responses to those. So for instance here, this is where a member has been added and we need to tell the rest of the game that a member has been added. So that gets uh, broadcast out to, to Pusher uh, on this, oh, this is the move one, sorry. But uh, oh, that, that's, that's to so it tells, you, tells them where you are. Um, this initializes a client, this is initializes a, a new player uh, a player has been removed, if someone of you had have left, you would have disappeared from the screen and everyone else's screen. Um, and uh, the various events that are in the game, even the ball bouncing against another player needs to be broadcast as an event. And this is where I spent most of my time was trying to get this to work across devices using SVG and scalable things. You'll notice that we all had different size, uh, different size uh, devices. But the idea was that we could, we could scale this to any proportion and still have the integrity of the position of the players and the ball. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, we didn't get to, I don't know, did anyone score a goal? No. <laughs> All right. So uh, next time I'll pay for the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pay Pusher for the, <laughs> maybe we can get them to sponsor something and we can get a, do a full talk. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. That's my lightning talk. Uh, if you're interested to look at the, the, the source code, it's available there. Uh, get to hub.com, advertise 100 players. Thanks to Pusher for uh, you know, providing video and providing a great platform for a bit of fun. And actually, that did fulfill a bit of my dream there of having a lot of people playing the same game at the same time and getting a little bit excited. So thank you. Are there any questions for Adam? Yeah. Um, it went up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and it should, t it should, it just turns your name into a emoji. Uh, <laughs> it didn't give you superpowers, um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I could have done more with it. I added it this afternoon because I just thought, well, why not? Um, uh, and. Uh, yeah, so that's why I kept the A and B in there because I just thought, you know, someone. I thought I was hoping someone would just try it anyway, um, just out of out of nature. Any other questions? How frequently do you push messages then? Like, like, is there like for every single frame the game is rendered, it's published to Pusher, or is it for every no for every single action in the game? So th what I, what I'm what I've got is I've got uh, I can I've got. I'm recalculating the position of all game, or the state of the game, every every action, right. and then. But every every player has uh, a local state stored. So if a player moves, I transmit that movement. Or if the ball hits a player and moves somewhere else, I transmit that movement, which all other players get. So the the movement of the ball turns out being a, to be a bit janky um, as a result uh, the players seem to move okay um, 
but um, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm running it using uh, the the animation frame DOM animation frame thing. That, that's 60 frames a second. That would be too many to run to send every. Uh, and so I'm, I'm trying to. I was trying to minimize it and probably could optimize how many messages I'm sending. Um, but uh, I didn't expect to run out of 200 to 200,000 so quickly. Yeah. And is there like an internal game state on your server, or is it just an agreement amongst the clients? No, there's there's no internal game state uh, on the server. And that was one of my goals was not to have to. I, I did I did look at that as an architecture uh, just to be able to you know when new say a new player joins to be able to you know update them with the positions of all the other players or the current score or whatever it is. Um, but I wanted to avoid that, and what, what I've got is I've got a concept of a game host. Uh, so the first player is, is the host. Um, so that, that, that's the player that transmits to all new players. Um, well, transmits to pusher, and then pusher pushes out. Um, and uh, if that player drops out, then the next, the next action will pick up a new game host and pick up the state from that. So there is a kind of, but it's not, it's not, it's not centrally controlled. Um, I mean, and it would be interesting to do this with sort of, you know, uh, you know uh, IPF, IPFS or something like that, where you have 100% sort of uh, distribution and no centrality, and see how that works. I mean, that would be maybe my next experiment. We look forward to your next talk. Cool. Anybody else want to ask any questions? Yeah. Is there, is there a quantity of service uh, for the... It's, it's like a queuing. Uh, system, isn't it? So, like, you need a quality of service that, to assure that your packets are reaching the either uh, server. So, for example, sometimes you might want to know if a packet actually reaches from a server's perspective. Is it, does it support kind of like checking that the, the service has registered that message? I'm not doing any checking. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that any message I sent is being received by everyone else in this iterate, in, in this version. I mean, it's like a game of Pong, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. But no, I, they, I mean, they have a lot of statistics and stuff around that possibly you could, you could see where things are failing, but I'm not, I mean, there's an error log. If, you, if we look at the, um, go back to the UI here, they have a sort of, they have a bunch of sort of error logs here. Um, yeah, quota exceeded. So we knew that happened. Um, uh, it happened four times. I don't know how you can exceed your quota four times. But um, yeah, so there, there, there may be tooling associated with what Pusher can offer. I don't know. I was just really trying to get as much as I could out of it for free. What's your next game going to be? <laughs> oh. I don't know. This one's been this one's been like fifteen years in the making, so. L <laughs> twenty thirty five. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you.